Hey, hey, hey PBA. PBA. I'm Melissa Liao. I'm Bella Ramirez. I'm Christine Rong. My name is Serena Zhang, and, and we're, we're your leaders, leaders for this year's Asian, Asian Diversity, Diversity Series. As you may know, our event, 790 Austin Street, was unfortunately canceled due to the coronavirus pandemic. However, we decided to create this video to celebrate Asian Pacific Heritage Month with you virtually. Last week, we created a fun list of activities for everyone to participate in, and of course, to show off our continuous support for one another during these uncertain times. We started off the week with Instagram challenges, such as posting a picture of you in an outfit from your culture or making origami. And for the rest of the week, we posted an Asian Heritage Month bingo, fun facts about many different Asian countries, and finally asked you guys to submit videos of you cooking your favorite Asian dishes. Thank you to everyone who joined us and we hope you all had fun along the process. APAA started its first Asian Heritage Festival back in 2017 and since then the number of participants and volunteers has continued to grow and last year was the first time it got to be sponsored and promoted by the school as one of the five diversity series. This year marks our fourth year of the festival. The name of our festival originated from the idea of night markets. In Asia, night markets are a crucial representation of how the food is connected with the families, the cultural traditions, and the community. We wanted to give people the chance to try all these different kinds of dishes, but we also wanted to raise an awareness and appreciation for Asian culture. During our festival, food from all different Asian countries, from Korea to Israel, are all represented, and as people are enjoying their food, they get to experience performances from students at PVA, as well as groups and organizations outside of PVA. My favorite part of the Asian festival was always being able to get together with PVA and our community to celebrate our heritage through art. My favorite part of the event is that we get to see all these different students representing their own cultural root and of course the different variety of food that they have. It really shows how supportive the teachers and students are to each other and it also really shows how diverse our school is. My favorite part of the event was getting to see such a large percentage of HSPVA come together to embrace the diversity of its community and take the time to enjoy and learn about one another. My favorite part of the festival, I think this is pretty hard, but probably the food. I hate to say it, but definitely the food. Um, it's so amazing to not only be at a place where you can celebrate Asian culture with your peers and to have a good time with your peers, but to also get to experience all different foods all in one day from so many different Asian countries represented and also get to enjoy performances at the same time. It's definitely amazing. Um, I love everything about the Asian festival, but that has to be one of my favorites. <laughs> Because we weren't actually able to share food this year, we asked the teachers to celebrate Heritage Month with us by making a video of them passing the dish. All right, you guys. So first up, we have Mr. D starting us off with the teacher's cooking challenges. Thank you, Porta Pepper, the star of our show for today. Welcome to my kitchen. 
Today I'm going to show you a simple Filipino dish. It's very traditional. It's something that in most families it will be passed from one generation to another. It's called the Filipino adobo. It's going to be a chicken based adobo. In the Philippines, just like in the other of Asia, food is something that people share. It's something that is that people kind of celebrate. They gather on the table, they eat together, and they share some stories for the day. And that's exactly what food is about, a celebration. These are our ingredients for today's dish. And of course, the star of the show, our spice, the pepper. Now that I've chopped all my spices my, and my, the rest of my ingredients, now I'm ready to saute my chicken with the spices. I'm putting the garlic first. Onions. Mmm, I can smell the flavor. Some bay leaf. And of course my chicken. Brown them a little bit. Now I'm going to add my special ingredient, my pepper, and some star anise to add sweetness to the flavor. Mix them up a little bit. You can hear the sizzling and the browning of the chicken. I'm adding a small amount of salt. Of course, cane vinegar, which is very typical in Asia. Small amount of rice vinegar, another Asian tradition. And soy sauce. Wow, you can smell the vinegar and all the spices together. After several minutes, we got our finished product. We got the sweet smelling and a little bit spicy chicken adobo. In the Philippines, we normally eat this with brown rice or white rice. Top it on rice. Mmm, smells really good. Smells yummy. Add more chicken. And voila, here we go. We got our finished product, the Filipino chicken adobo. And here's the spice for you. Okay, Mr. D, that looked really, really delicious. So next up, we have Miss Karakoch, and she will be making ground beef keema, which is a Pakistani dish. Assalamu alaikum, you guys. This is Mrs. Karakoch here. I'm about to make some ground beef keema, which is a South Asian dish, and it's specifically a Pakistani dish that I'm gonna make today. Um, let me go ahead and show you what I've got here. All right, so these are the ingredients, canola oil, salt, um, pepper, turmeric, red pepper flakes, paprika, and then I put all of that together in this bowl, including cinnamon. I don't know why I took away the cinnamon. Um, I've got a lot of garlic. This is like one whole head of garlic. I don't have fresh ginger, so I'm using a uh, ginger garlic paste, but ginger is such an important ingredient because it's what takes away the um, the taste of the beef, like the raw, like gamey taste. It takes it away. It's a really good um, ingredient to have. But the key ingredient that I'm talking about today is garam masala, and that's my dad's handwriting. He got this huge jar of garam masala from one of the South Asian grocery stores in um, Hill Hillcroft and Harwin. Um, and that's where he gets like a ton of it and then he usually gives me some. So um, garam masala is the key ingredient. So we've got ground beef, <laughs> potato, about two large potatoes. I cut uh, three Roma tomatoes. You normally use yellow onion, but all we had was red onion. So I cut up an onion. Um, and then we've got one whole head of garlic and then the spices. 
Um, another key ingredient is cilantro, which I do not have fresh, but I do have cilantro leaves dried that I'll be adding to the end. I'm also going to be adding some lime. I wish I had some lemon, but as you can see our state of our situation over here, we've just got one lime left. So I'm gonna use that lime as much as I can. So I'm adding canola oil to a hot, hot pan and I'm gonna let it sit there for a bit. I am adding my ingredients. I've got my garlic first into the hot pan and then my beautiful spices. Just mix in the pan. So you're gonna let it do its thing for a bit because the flavors have gotta mix really well. I know I'm using one of these plastic tongs, but. So next, I'm going to add my onions. Make sure that everything is hot. Adding a lot of onions, woo! All right, I'm gonna put a good bit of garam masala in here, woo! And I'm also gonna put ginger garlic paste. I wish it was just ginger because I already put a lot of garlic in there, but you know what? You can't go wrong with a lot of garlic. It's been about five minutes since I combined everything together and I'm just waiting on the onions to sort of really soften, maybe a little bit more. All right, guys, I added the meat. Break it up as much as I can. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the potatoes too. Added the potatoes. This is my lid, y'all. Moving it down to low, and I'm gonna wait 25 minutes. Okay, so I added the dried cilantro leaves and the jalapenos. Okay, you guys, so I think I'm done. This is the quima and alu, actually. Alu is the, the potato. And I've got some tortillas because I don't have naan, but you know what? I'm making do. And don't forget to pass the pepper. Next up, we have Miss Apte teaching us how she makes sar. Namaskar, everybody. Hello, I'm making sar, which is a tomato broth from India. It has these Kashmiri chilies, which give off a really bright red color, but aren't too hot. Green chilies, uh, coconut, hing, uh, which is really, or asafoetida, which is really smelly, mustard seed, turmeric, this is cumin seed, um, tomatoes. This is my acha kaveri. I first had this dish at her home in Pune, India, in the state of Maharashtra. I always associate her with really good food, um, and she always took good care of us when we visited. This is a super easy dish, but I have three helpers with me today. Tomatoes are cooking, mustard seeds are crackling, the cumin seeds. There's the chili, the turmeric, curry leaves. I forgot to tell you about the curry leaves at the beginning. The cumin and the mustard seeds. There are the tomatoes going. After I boil down the tomatoes, I add coconut, green chilies, more cumin seed, and blend. So I actually think I did this backwards. I'm supposed to add this to this but it doesn't matter. Um, my aunts would say I'm doing this wrong, but they would definitely appreciate the effort. It looks really gross right now, but it's gonna be beautiful. You'll see. And my third and favorite helper is stirring the soup. And I think we're done. Okay, I think we're done. And I think this is a spoon from the teacher's lounge. Kashmiri and green chilies, passing this on. 
Thank you, Miss Apte, for passing the spice. Next, we will pass the spice on to Miss Hines. This is the pepper I'm gonna use. I'm making a, sort of a Sichuan beef, so ready to get started. This stuff from the produce section. And these are the peppers that we're gonna go with, the peppers that don't bring a whole lot of heat, but that ginger brings a little heat. And this lady is my dad's mom. Her full name was Kim Yun Tech, and her nickname was Kimmy. And my parents named me Kimmy after her. Um, she was just an amazing and strong woman. She survived a, being in prison in a concentration camp and starvation and all kinds of things and just came out of it kind of a warrior. And when we do things, we sort of honor her when we cook. So this is cooking hair, because cooking is like war. So like getting the lid on top and so letting it simmer or whatever. <laughs> Just enough for three people. It's like nine cups. Next, we have Mr. Dang showing us his dish. Hey, I'm Mr. Dang, and we're here to celebrate Asian Pacific Heritage Month. When the other teachers asked me to introduce all the spicy food they were preparing, I thought it might be a good chance to discuss a figuratively hot topic, Asian representation. So let's start with a poem published in The New Yorker, because of course I'm going to. Have they run out of provinces yet? If they haven't, we've reason to fret. Long ago, there was just Cantonese. Long ago, we were easy to please. But then food from Sichuan came our way, making Cantonese strictly a passe. So the poet and the New Yorker caught a lot of flack for representing Asian food and culture as a mere product for people to consume, implying that our diversity is limited to and intended for their dinner plates. But these foods aren't just trends for people to try in restaurants. They are windows, get it, windows, into both the contemporary lifestyles and old traditions of Asians and Asian Americans. There's more to a culture than just its culinary offerings. The experience of sharing a meal ties families and communities together. So today, we've prepared some dishes for you, and we would like to just invite you to join us in celebrating our heritage. Hey, it's Mr. Deng again. When I cook, I mostly just improvise and add fresh aromatics to whatever I'm eating. Basically, I try just to do what my mom does. So there's not really a recipe here, but I want to share a poem that I thought matched with my dinner tonight. Eating Together by Lee Young Lee. In the steamer is a trout, 
seasoned with slivers of ginger, two sprigs of green onion, and sesame oil. We shall eat it with rice for lunch. Brothers, sister, my mother will taste the sweetest meat of the head, holding it between her fingers deftly, the way my father did weeks ago. Then he lay down to sleep like a snow-covered road, winding through pines older than him, without any travelers, and lonely for no one. So, there we have it. Hope you've enjoyed looking at our little meals, and hope you come away with some of that sense of connection that we feel when we sit down around the table for a simple family dinner. Okay, so last but not least, we will have Miss Wynn, and she will be showing us how she makes spring rolls. Ciao, everyone. So today we're going to be making spring rolls. My parents are going to show you how to do it. It's going to be very fun. Making. What is this, man? Fish sauce. Fish sauce? What's inside the fish sauce? Chili, jalapeno, cucumber, and I'm eating and roll. Rice paper. Okay. And uh, white noodle. Oh my god, what's up, man? Lettuce. Oh. Okay, I'll put later. Today I don't have my swim. It's a pot belly. You know up. Yeah, roll up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, the the Looking good. <laughs> Next step is fish sauce. Like this, okay? Like this. So good. Good for my uh, my love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how you make me roll. Oh, As you seen from the teacher's videos, our event is not solely built on the food that we have. It is also built on the culture and traditions that we hold and pass on for many, many generations. Once again, it is extremely unfortunate that our event had to be canceled this year. But we hope that you enjoyed this video and that you'll continue to celebrate Asian Heritage and Heritage Month at home. Happy Asian Heritage Month! 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 Happy Asian American Heritage Month! Happy Asian Heritage Month! Happy Asian Heritage Month.